Hello everyone, I'm Craig A. Woodward. And I'm James A. Moores. I'm the idiot and he's the bohemian, and even if this is your first time here, welcome back to The Broken Quill. Our topic today is Voices in Your Head, How Do We Write? This is a topic I've personally been wanting to do for a while, if only because I've seen evidence of this situation throughout the writer's field, and yet not a single YouTube video on it. I am, of course, talking about the difference between someone who feels the difficulty of planning out painstakingly every aspect of their story and characters versus some of those lucky writers that get to enjoy literal conversations with their characters themselves. Talk to them, hear their stories, learn their own book as it moves on, as they act as scribe for the characters' adventures. It's fascinating. James, why do you think no one touches on the topic. Why is it that every bit of writing advice or discussion focused on the former, the planner, versus the latter, the scribe, why why is it always focused on the or, or, on the planner? And people just seem to think it's better. I watched a video lately about problems with the Star Wars series and the resounding statement was that you have to plan things out. That you require to have a giant wall with all your characters lined up and little pieces of fell twine connecting them. It's sort of this thing people jump to. When something works, people say, that's a great plan. He really must have had everything figured out in advance. And when something doesn't, people say, oh, that's must bad planning. So the idea of someone just sitting down and writing is seen as dangerous. I believe this comes from the American writing tradition, not necessarily American writers, but the way early American writing was viewed. It was workmanlike, something that you were doing in your spare time as a hobby. In those early days of American writing, there was a plethora of prefaces which reminded the audience not to worry, writing wasn't the author's job. It was just sort of a side thing. I can also see that today, we often hear of the starving artist, the musician hiding in a garage playing his guitar, the painter in a loft covered in nothing but torn canvases, and the photographer wandering the streets in his well-worn pants. These are held up as noble pursuits, an artist unfettered by the drawl of a nine-to-five which stifles creativity and destroys the soul. Writers, on the other hand, no, no. We're often told not to quit our day jobs. These are not reality of our situation. But it's the way we see things, the way we interpret them. So it's not talked about because it's seen as uh, dangerous? I, I think I can understand that, but I also find it fascinating. I'm, I'm part of a, a great many writing groups on Reddit to Twitter to Facebook, and in each of them I see hundreds of writers talking about how they hear their characters. Their characters speak to them. Their characters went out of control. It seems that this is not only common, it might actually be more common than a planning writer. I'd have expected someone to have taken note to at least talk about it before now, and if they have and I've just missed them, do post a link in the comments. I want to hear their opinions, but... Before I started talking to you privately, James, about seeing these other writers, uh, did you feel that this type of writing and, and seeing your stories was rare? I always thought my writing was inferior because I didn't plan things out. I had a pretty much the same view that you did. The writers who write by planning was better than I who didn't. And you can probably blame a few creative writing courses for that. I am never quite sure about what to say about creative writing courses, but I know the ones I have attended were poor things. Oftentimes, simply trying to beat into you a singular style and way of doing things. One of those things is have a plan. Design things out. I knew from my creative writing class I was weird. Of those in the class I spoke to, writing was difficult. It was something they had to think about hard. To me, the stories just came. I was told to write a story, so I wrote a story. They'd give me a prompt or an exercise, and I'd just write it. Sure, they showed me some form, some function, but as for how you write, you can't really teach people just listen to the story, let it flow through you. So what do you teach? Plan. Design. 
creation. Maybe that's why people don't do videos on it. You can give writing advice on how to plan, but it sounds like writing advice for listening to the voices in your head is less articulated academics and more sound bites from Yoda. I myself, this is for the viewers, but I'm a planner. I have to scratch and bleed myself to be able to write worth a darn. I have to plan everything out meticulously and work hard to be able to push forward. My characters do not speak to me. James, on the other hand, hears voices. So James, for those that are like me and listening, what's it like? It's hard to describe. And I think it's something that you can't really talk about, at least in a strange sort of way. I see myself as doing half in, half out. I do use story outlines, but you've seen them, Craig. They're <laughs> one line for an entire 5,000 word chapter. They're a guide, nothing more, not a plan. I suppose I can say very simply, I will be doing something. Something as mundane as walking upstairs, and I will receive a burst, which is simply a character telling me about themselves, about their journey, about something in this book, another book, and it's just a story. Just a, this is what happened to me on the way to the chemist. And I'll either fit it in, or the story will change in the writing. And then, when I sit down to write, the story guides itself. It follows its own whims, and it goes places I hadn't even planned. The words just flow, they just come. It's hard to say it any other way. That's probably why you don't get a lot of videos on it. Nobody wants to watch a writer say, how do I write? I just write. You see, that's endlessly fascinating to me, and endlessly frustrating. We'll sit down for writing sessions and I'll be proud to bleed out 900 words and you'll turn around with a swift 3k. But don't get me wrong, not envious, just wish my own productivity could be half your own. And you're right, I have seen your plans. I believe an interesting one was a two-line concept that gave birth to your first 75k novel. I intend to agree with a lot of what Mr. King says about writing, but one place we must agree to disagree is the writer's journal. He says it memorializes bad ideas, and I am completely with him on that, but I feel that just because an idea is bad doesn't mean it can't be good. Because as you're saying, the description from my first novel in my writer's journal was a quick sketch and a few lines, a concept. Next to nothing of what ended up in the book was there in the plan. And that plan? It was a few pages long, bullet form, so it wasn't very long. You've seen my style of planning, James. Hell, we both tried to collaborate on a piece together that never made it past the concepting stage. How do you feel about the other side of the coin, trying to plan the work rather than let it flow? Well, that's why the collab died. And it may be that we can never actually successfully collaborate on something. I don't want to say that planners and listeners can never collaborate, but it's hard. I want to just jump into it, start writing, damn the torpedoes and all that. But you couldn't. You needed to plan. And to me, the plan was stifling. I remember we were talking about our plan, setting down the universe, and I got to the point where the plan was so detailed I just threw up my hands and said, if the plan is this detailed, why not just write it? I think that's another question. How detailed should your plan be? I'm not a planner, so for me, anything more than a few lines, concepting a scene or a paragraph to keep my place in my memory, is stifling. I almost never keep to my plan anyway, so what's the point of me doing a plan? I don't know if that's what it's like for other listeners, but it's what it's like for me. How detailed are your plans? Do you have one for your current novel? I have an exhaustive, exhaustively detailed one for my current novel. Well, sorta. In previous works, I've literally got over 70 pages of planning for other projects that have fallen to the wayside because, well, they're not viable. As for this actual viable one, the one I'm writing now, my epic fantasy, I have everything planned out perfectly, planned down to the lines and dialogue in my head as a movie. In my head. That I thankfully haven't forgotten and really should get to work on putting to paper. But that being said, it's still quite detailed and I wouldn't be able to write if I didn't have this understanding in my brain of where I'm going with it. As for how much planning is too much, 
I'd say that's a personal problem of mine, needing to plan too much. I know there's a point where you flip the table, say screw the planning and you get to writing, because as Jodie Picoult says, you can always edit a bad page, you can't edit a blank page. So if the plan isn't working out, you can always change it as you go, work on it, alter what's needed. And as I've done a few times with entire characters, you, you sometimes need to change things, but you at least have to start the damn thing sometimes and I know that's a personal difficulty of mine and I'm not sure how to fight beyond downing some energy drink, grabbing a cup of tea and forcing myself onto a blank page and gluing my fingers to the keyboard. Well writer's block is writer's block, it's something that happens to us all and I don't think there isn't a writer who hasn't experienced it. You've told me my writing block isn't writer's block, so I guess maybe I haven't really experienced it, but I think writer's block is just about moving words from your head to the page, and whether you do it by the voices or the plan, it's all the same. You mentioned above this idea of me putting out a lot of words, but I don't think that's specifically inherent to listeners. I mean, it might be. I only have myself to judge, and... I can go into these trance-like states writing sometimes. I can get very weird at times, and I don't want to go too deep into it, but I can tell you that I do think, at times, it can be useful for everyone, even listeners, to just force something onto the page and edit it later. And, and uh, yeah, what, what you had, I wouldn't actually still, I still wouldn't call writer's block. Uh, writer's block, um, or at least as I understand it, is a lack of inspiration or ability to figure out how to progress in a scene or state or chapter or place in the story that you're in. You're literally blocked because your plan isn't working or you can't figure out how to say what you want to say. But you told me you knew exactly what to say, even how to write it. You knew how to move forward. Nothing was stopping you except you. That's executive dysfunction, and it is the absolute bane of my life. It's like staring at a blank page and knowing all you have to do is type on the keys and you just can't lift your arms to do it worst thing ever. I'm not surprised that it can affect both listeners and planners. Speaking of things that can affect both, what do you think the pros and cons are? I, I'd say that the pro of a planner is being able to see the big picture and how it all weaves together to create something truly intricate and detailed. Well, then again, I, I say that, but I've seen you create things far more intricate and detailed than myself, so maybe I'm wrong on that. And as for the cons, well, planning comes with many. A, a slowness to start, an over-enthusiastic writer not knowing when to quit. Uh, do you feel listening has any distinct advantages or disadvantages as a writing style? Oh, and uh, here's a fun question. Do you think it's just a brain perspective thing, or could it perhaps be learned? Well, at one point, you told me your characters were talking to you, didn't you? Oh, oh yes, they did, for a period of two months, and I wrote like the devil during it. Had to rewrite many parts since then, but they have since went long silent, I'm afraid, so, yeah. I don't know if it's something that can be taught. Nobody taught me to write the way I do, that's why I don't really like calling it a style. I also don't really think about pros and cons of it. I was watching an interview with George R. R. Martin, author of the Game of Thrones series, and someone asked him how he planned who lived and who died. He said he didn't. The questioner, a member of the audience, was gobsmacked. They asked, how is that possible? How can you have the foreshadowing, the complex world, everything, without planning? Martin simply shrugged and said he's always written like that. It was nice to hear that a major author wrote like me, and whether you like his writing or not, one can't deny the intricacies of his world. And let's be clear, he also proves a point about writing fast or slow. He's not a fast writer, and Stephen King, when they sit opposite each other, is pumping out novels left, right, and center, and from my understanding, he also writes like this. He explained a trilogy came out of a newspaper article he read. I don't think planning lets you see the big picture any more than listening does. As you said, you've had to rewrite things, go back, change things, because your novel is only as good as your plan, and when you realize your plan is wrong, you need to fix things. 
Same with voices. Once you find out the voices are wrong, you have to change things. I don't feel that one is inherently superior to the other. I don't think there are pros and cons. The pros and the cons aren't universal. How we write is how we write. And I definitely don't want to be telling anyone that their method is wrong. I like that answer. I think that's a good note to end this on. Your style is valid, no matter what it is, simply right. I like that. Well, I hope those listening found this interesting. If it was, leave a comment below. Maybe let us know your style, what writing is like for you. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. I'm Craig A. Woodward. And I'm James A. Moores. And we look forward to seeing you again on The Broken Quill.